Hey guys, Derek with Think Computers here, and we are checking out ASIO's new mechanical keyboard, the MGK1 RGB. This is a full mechanical keyboard, it features kale blue switches. Let's go ahead and check it out. It goes without saying that the biggest feature of the MGK1 RGB is the RGB backlighting. The backlighting comes in six different modes um, from waves to spectrum cycling. You can also do custom color setting to set up the keys however you like. Um, that's all done through onboard controls. Uh, those keys themselves are of course kale blues as we said. They feature detachable keycaps and full key and rollover so you shouldn't have any missed key presses. Uh, the construction of the board features a gunmetal anodized aluminum faceplate and also has a detachable UV coated palm rest. Uh, along the top of the board on the function keys you will also have easy access hotkeys for a lot of functions within your operating system as well as your easy access uh, volume scroll wheel at the top right. Pulling the MGK1 RGB out of the box, we find the keyboard wrapped in plastic as well as the palm rest. We get the braided cord up at the top with gold plated connectors, uh, as well as a manual and a troubleshooting guide. And finally, we get a key pulling tool. As you can see, the MGK1 RGB is a full mechanical keyboard, uh, which means we've got a numpad on the right hand side here. Above that, you'll find the scroll wheel, which has a nice little rubberized finish on it, so it grips easily. Next to that is a mute button, and to the left of that is some status lights uh, for your caps, num lock, etc. Uh, you've also got a your palm rest. It's nice and wide, uh, fully plastic. Got little rubber grips on the front of it, so it doesn't slide around. Um, it's got it's not like rubberized or anything on the surface. It does have a coating, and it's got little dimples drilled in it, so that probably reduces friction. Um, make things easier when you're gaming, long sessions, etc. Uh, it attaches to the keyboard itself quite easily. One little clip on the front like that. Um, as I said, it's really wide, easily reducing fatigue on your wrist. Um, the kale blue keys, as you can hear, kind of loud, but I wouldn't say they're cherry blue loud. They've got a good response to them. It's just not quite the same tactile feel as a cherry blue. Uh, I would say they fall somewhere in between a blue and a red cherry switch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove a couple of the keycaps for you here so you can check out these kale switches underneath. As you can see, the switch top is blue. Helps designate which switches you've got. Without the keys on them, they're actually quite a bit quieter, which is interesting. Uh, you can see on the back of them um, is the LED RGB bit, um, which has a light on the top, and then it also seems to have a little panel that goes to the rest of it. Let's try to get a little closer for you here. They, they pull right off easily, and they go right back on just as easily. All right, now let's go ahead and check out the different color modes and backlighting on the MGK1 RGB. Go ahead and plug it in here. Uh, when it starts up, it does this little chase thing where it really lights up all the keys in white and chases them around in a little closing in circle. And then it goes straight into the last um, selected color mode. So what a really cool feature of this deck is that it actually has built-in memory. Uh, right in it so it stores whichever function you last had and all your custom presets and stuff like that So you don't have to worry about losing or setting them, them up again uh, If you plug it into a different desktop or laptop, so you're good to go there uh, What it doesn't have is anything in the way of companion software So there is no on-screen adjustments you do everything through the keyboard itself uh, So some people would like that some people don't I think it'd be nice to have uh, that as an option to do some different um customization options would be a little bit easier from the desktop. Um, but let's go ahead and check out what it does have in the six different light modes here. Um, we'll go ahead and just start at the beginning, which is the spectrum cycling mode. And that is simply um, cycling through all seven different colors. Um, so let's go ahead and check that out. Um, it has, of course, you can adjust the brightness. 
So as you can see, um, this little white light up here is gonna flash anytime you are maxed out on a setting. So we're at the very brightest, and we can go ahead and dim it down to the very lowest, and it's obviously off, and it lets us know. Um, we know that with the brightness, but in other modes, it's nice to have that feature so you know when you've hit, uh, bottomed out or hit the top. So we'll go ahead and bring the brightness all the way back up so we can clearly see all the uh, different lighting. Um, as far as this mode, we can also, aside from changing the brightness, we can increase and decrease the speed of the color change using the function key and the uh, plus arrow or the minus arrow. Right now we're at the fastest uh, color change mode. We can slow that all the way down though. So we hit the bottom and now it's just going to very, very slowly become more green for us here. So we would bring that back up. We want to see a little bit more change and probably use this a little bit the top. Now we get a little bit faster cycling through that mode. Uh, next up, we have the splash mode, which is function home. And this is basically like a ripple effect. Um, starts in the middle. You, it doesn't really matter um, whether you're pressing keys. It always kind of starts right from the middle of the keyboard. Um, you can increase and decrease brightness in this mode. Uh, you can also increase and decrease the speed of the color change using the function and the plus key. So we'll go ahead and max out that so you can see it speeds up considerably which is maybe kind of seizure inducing so we will slow it down all the way to the bottom which is maybe a little bit too slow it is kind of cool though that it actually slows the whole ripple effect down not just the speed that it's um, starting at but we would probably choose somewhere in the middle for this mode personally pretty cool. Uh, next up we have the wave mode which is function uh, page up and all these modes have um, little uh, symbols on them to kind of uh, give you a hint as to which mode it is if you don't have the manual handy check them out but uh, wave mode is obviously it's started with the color on one side and going to the other side. Uh, in wave mode we can change the brightness level and we can also change the direction of the flow. So currently we are going from left to right by pressing function and right arrow. We can start the wave on the right. Nope, where are you? Switch that over. Start the wave on the right and go to the left with the left arrow. Switch it back, starts over here, moves over there. I kind of wish we could change the speed of the wave. Um, and maybe the color pattern selected, but um, those are simply the functions that we have there. Uh, next up we have color marquee, function delete, which is the mode that we actually had it start off in, uh, which is rotating through all the colors. Again, we can change the direction that we want the wave to start in, left to right, right to left. Uh, we can also, um, hitting function delete, we can freeze it freeze it, freeze it again. So if you you want to have a multicolored um, keyboard without messing with the colors in any way in a custom mode, you can use this. Cool. I kind of just like letting it go though. Um, uh, the last preset mode is going to be function page down and that is the reactive mode. So that is a tracer that will follow you around. We see these, this is a mode, the pretty popular mode on uh, most RGB or backlit keyboards. Um, so the, I kind of find that this one is a little bit slow. Um, I wish it chased faster or maybe even lingered longer. Um, but within the mode we can change the colors to the different presets. So we just hit function page down. And we cycle through the seven different colors. So you have that. Um, it's I don't find that to be the most interesting mode in the world. Um, we also finally have using function N. This is our custom color mode. So I went ahead and made this one red and blue. And I also highlighted the WASD keys in white for our for gaming. Um, this is pretty cool. You can set the uh, keys to any colors you want and any pattern you want, but that is the limit of it. There's no movement. There's nothing else to it. Um, it's just custom color setting. You can, by pressing function 
end again, um, the change light turns on and you can start to cycle the lights through seven different colors. As you can see, we've got red, green, yellow, blue, purple, pink, uh, purple or pink, uh, aqua, white, and off. So we'll get that one back to blue. That one switched off too, back to blue. Um, and then to end it, set function end, and that is the end of the custom mode. Of course, you can change the brightness level in all of the modes using the up and down arrows. Uh, and that is the end of that. Overall, I find um, that it's got, it's a pretty good selection of colors um, and modes. I just, again, I do wish that I had some software so I could create some custom movement. Um, the lighting itself is, it's pretty, pretty bright. I, I think it could be a bit brighter. If you're sitting in a, in a well lit room, it's, it certainly doesn't stand out very well. Um, you actually have a lot of light bleed from around the keys, so it's not necessarily forced up through them, or they're not opaque enough, perhaps. Um, it looks really good from the side in some of the different modes, um, so that's good, but I do wish we saw more light through the top of it. This has been the ASIO MGK1 RGB mechanical keyboard. This keyboard can be found on most major online retailers for as little as $89.99. At that price, this is an awesome deal. Be sure to check out my full written review at thinkcomputers.org. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.